The argument against quartz is usually summed up as this can't compete with this. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now this is a video that's geared towards those that are newer to the hobby, as most people at some point inevitably have the same experience. After spending hours on forums and YouTube, you eventually find a watch that you absolutely fall in love with. And maybe you have more questions about it, or maybe you've actually bought it and want to share your experiences, as it's a watch that everyone should know more about and everyone should love. Regardless, you put yourself out there and you want to share your experiences with the world about this great watch. And in a very short amount of time, you find out that you were completely wrong. That it is actually one of the worst watches ever created. To the point that its lead designer should be arrested for crimes against humanity and the company that created it should be dissolved and erased from history. All of the great attributes that you accredited it to have been erased away from the unforgivable sin of having a quartz movement. Now, I'm exaggerating, of course. Well, a little. But this does happen to some extent. And for those new, it can be confusing. So I wanted to create this video to shed a little light on the subject, so to speak. But let me be clear. This is not a video where I'm going to simply bash quartz. Nor is it a video where I'm going to call out so-called elitist snobs. This is a video where I'm going to do what's almost impossible these days on the internet. Try to take a neutral, impartial look at things and give my opinion as to why I think there's such a disconnect in the greater community when it comes to quartz. But first, a little background. Now, the first quartz clock was made in 1927 at Bell Labs, and as the name suggests, used a quartz crystal to regulate it. Now, it took another 40 years before technology advanced enough that it could be put into a wrist watch. And in only two decades, quartz wristwatches went from being a high-end, rare luxury item to dominating the entire industry. But to answer the question as to why this occurred, one only needs to look at what the advantages of quartz are versus a mechanical movement, which is lower cost to mass produce, the convenience of a battery-powered movement, and a more accurate movement, or rather the ability to mass produce more accurate movements. But the question then is, if quartz is so much more advanced, why is it not the better movement? And the answer is that more advanced does not always mean better. It's really a matter of one's individual perception. If you're looking at the watch from a purely functional standpoint, thinking of it as just a tool for timekeeping, then yes, quartz is obviously the better technology and movement. But for many, a watch is a blending of form and function. For some people, it's not just a tool, but a fashion accessory, a piece of jewelry, an heirloom. And in some cases, it's a representation of one's own individuality. It all depends on the person and what they put their emphasis in. Now, I don't think the people that have an issue with quartz have an issue with the idea of a quartz movement. It's more the implementation and the execution of that idea that they have an issue with. Practically all quartz movements look the same, regardless of how accurate or how expensive they are. In a world that's becoming more and more digital, some people put a higher emphasis on quality and craftsmanship, or at the very least, the perception of craftsmanship. A quartz movement is a literal black box, where most people don't understand its internal workings. Where a mechanical movement is something they can hold in their hand and see work. And as the saying goes, seeing is believing, and a mechanical movement is something they can hold in their hands and begin to understand its complexities. Whereas a quartz movement is really just a mystery unless you have some understanding of electrical engineering. And that's what gives mechanical movements value to some. It's value that they can see and hold in their hand, with the perception that a real human being had to use their skills to create it. 
rather than the perception that it was just stamped out on a soulless automated assembly line. Now personally, I like all watches, and I'm definitely not allergic to quartz, as I once saw someone say. I've looked at plenty of quartz watches in the past, and I have no plans on stopping. Now while it's true, quartz movements are easier to make once an assembly line is set up, but I think a lot of people forget that designing a quartz movement is just as challenging as designing a mechanical movement. Both require very specialized and skilled individuals, just in very different disciplines. And that's not to mention the skills required to design the newer, highly accurate quartz movements, let alone create the high quality crystals required for them. In many ways, growing crystals is as much an art as it is a science. Regardless, as I said earlier, a watch is a blend of form and function. For me, what makes a watch great isn't one specific part, but the whole package. A great engine without a car is nothing but a giant paperweight. And a great car without an engine, well, that's just a lawn decoration in the South. But along the same lines, it's the combination of different elements working together to become greater than the sum of its parts. Build quality, design, and the movement, all in harmony with one another, make a timepiece great. Now, while I do prefer automatics, I think there are some situations where quartz is the preferable movement. The first of which is when you really need a watch to be more of a tool than anything else. And I think this is more for military, maybe first responders. People who have situations where they need to leave the house at a moment's notice, and they just need something that they can grab and go. And they don't have time to worry about whether it's still accurate or whether they put it on the winder the night before. Although in some ways, I think we can all relate where we have times where we just need to grab something and go. The second is chronographs. And this is more for people who actually need to use the chrono rather than just like the look of a chrono. Mechanical chronographs are complex, costly, less accurate, and more expensive to maintain. And that's not to mention if you accidentally forget to disengage the chrono when you're done, you're already consuming a very limited power reserve of a mechanical movement. And lastly, gifts. Not everyone can uh, appreciate the complexities, shall we say, that come with a elegant and refined design of a mechanical timepiece. Some people just want something that looks good and works. I mean, that's basically been Apple's design philosophy over the last couple of decades. So before you buy a friend or family member a mechanical watch, think about whether or not they really are the type of person who could appreciate it. Otherwise, they'll never wear it. Well, that's just my opinion. But let me know your opinion in the comments, and let me know what you think about quartz. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and until next time.